I want to talk about something that I've found really annoying and I've been thinking about a lot lately, and that is celebrities writing letters of support for their friends during trials. So like, say you're on trial for something like, I don't know, I accused you of stealing my ice cream. It's likely that they're going to try to understand your character. So they may ask people who are close to you to send letters, basically explaining what kind of person you are. And you know, if all of your friends are like, oh yeah, no, this person, they are the ice cream stealer of the century it's probably not going to bode well for you but if you get a bunch of letters saying you know i've had ice cream with this person every day and i've never experienced this problem that might influence the jury's decision i have no idea why i've chosen ice cream as a metaphor here i may be hungry and i think it's going to my brain but the point is this happens with normal people and this happens with celebrities as well but it gets a lot less funny if you will when the crimes that these people are accused of are extremely serious and so today all jokes aside, I want to go over a couple of cases in which these really high profile celebrities are just writing letters of support willy nilly for their friends when the friends in question have been accused of everything from assault to shooting. So I want to make it really clear that the first person I'm talking about isn't just like accused of the crime in this case. This man, Danny Masterson, who is an actor on That 70s Show, which was a really popular sitcom, he's been sentenced uh, because he was found guilty on multiple counts of raping people. So obviously, this is not the kind of person you would want to publicly align yourself with, or I would even think privately. But nevertheless, here we go. So Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis are really high profile stars as well, and they co-starred with him. And so they decided during these trials, just like I explained, to write letters of support for dear old Danny. And I'm going to be honest, these are just these are just unhinged. I want to make it really clear before we get into this that they knew that he was found guilty at this point. This wasn't even just a thing where they thought maybe he was possibly not, you know, responsible for all of this. So we're not going to read the full letters because honestly, they're always the exact same, but they always start off by trying to establish some baseline of credibility. Honorable Judge Olmedo, my name is Ashton Kutcher. I am an actor, investor, philanthropist, and most importantly, a father. And it's like, I definitely understand trying to humanize yourself, but but you are also a celebrity, a massively influential and popular person who people are willing to listen to and willing to believe over other people. So the fact that you're chiming in at all, I already take great issue with. Anyway, he goes on to explain how he and Danny met, and then he, I guess, starts painting a picture of Danny's personality. As a friend, Danny has been nothing but a positive influence on me. He's an extraordinarily honest and intentional human being. Over 25 year relationship, I don't ever recall call him lying to me. So this is another thing that you're going to find in literally all of these letters. And it's basically this implication that like, yeah, this person might be accused of, you know, um, assaulting multiple people or shooting someone, but, but they were just so nice to me. And it's like, of course they were nice to you. You hold a pretty equal amount of power. Like being nice to one person doesn't mean that somebody isn't capable of being very not nice to somebody who is at a much more disadvantaged position than you. Ashton then goes on and on about drugs, saying, um, I attribute not falling into the typical Hollywood life of drugs directly to Danny. Anytime that we were to meet someone or interact with someone who was on drugs or did drugs, he made it clear that that wouldn't be a good person to be friends with. And this is just kind of weird because, first of all, I... I, I would say you can totally be friends with people who have issues like this. But besides that, it's just really weird that he's harping on the drug issue here because part of the sentencing and part of what Danny Masterson was found guilty of was actually drugging these women before he would assault them. So the fact that Ashton has gone out of his way to really paint a picture of like, he's so anti-drugs, it just, it feels like an implication that Danny could never have done this, which feels like an implication that the women who came forward and accused him are lying. Okay, okay, so the next part that's always in these letters is they'll try to bring up some scenario, some really specific 
scenario in which the person in question did something so nice that how, how could they possibly be a bad person? So here it is right here. There was an incident where we were at a pizza parlor and a belligerent man entered who is berating his girlfriend. We had never met or seen these people before, but Danny was the first person to jump to the defense of this girl. It was an incident he didn't have to get involved in, but proactively chose to because the way this man was behaving was not right. He had always treated people with decency, equality, and generosity. And it's like, Okay, but obviously he has not always treated people this way if he was fa like, don't get me wrong, even though I totally don't excuse this at all, because I think this is just a gross misuse of power in an attempt to understand why someone would even do this in the first place. I can see the perspective of wanting to defend your friend because you have this really nice perception of them. However, that doesn't change the fact that. This person is still capable of other things. Like, let's be real. Somebody who goes around abusing other people, they're not doing so publicly. Otherwise, they would be caught. They're not going around introducing themselves like, hi, I'm Danny Masterson, and I do awful, awful things to people all the time. So, of course, your perception of him is only based off of what he decided to reveal to you. Part of the reason these letters are so frustrating is because it's like, these celebrities think they're doing something, but none of the things that they're bringing up really have any bearing on whether or not these things could have happened or not. Now, the next part where I was just utterly confused is where Ashton Kutcher says, Danny had his daughter a year before I had mine. He set the standard of being a hands-on dad. We have spent countless hours together with our kids, and he is among few people that I would trust to be alone with my son and daughter. You are basically just broadcasting that you would totally leave your children alone with a convicted rapist. I, I actually don't, what would possess someone to say this? I just find this extra disturbing because if say the son or the daughter came forward and said something happened, are you just going to start talking about how Danny was just so nice at that pizza joint you went to that there's no way he did this? Like, I don't even really understand. Like, this part is not in most of these letters I'm referring to. That one really threw me for a loop. Anyway, he says, I hope that my testament to his character is taken into consideration in sentencing. I do not believe he's an ongoing harm to society and having his daughter raised without a present father would be a tertiary injustice in and of itself. Thank you for taking the time to read this. It's... It's like Danny Masterson did this. It's not like the court's fault or just like society's fault that his daughter is not going to have a father. It is Danny Masterson's doing. He is the reason that this is going to happen. So I don't really know why he's trying to honestly paint Danny as a victim here when he is literally the perpetrator in this case. And also to say, I hope that my testament to his character is taken into consideration in sentencing. You know, it's going to be taken into consideration. You are Ashton Kutcher. I don't get this. Like, thankfully, thankfully, despite it being taken into consideration, justice was still served at the end of the day. But this is like, this is just, you know, that you have power. You know that you are a celebrity. You know that you have influence and sway over these things. So to cop out at the end and kind of be like, oh, I just, I really hope you guys listen to me. I'm like, dude. And I know I'm providing a lot of criticism and like negative opinions about this. So if you're wondering what solution do I have, I legitimately just think you should not say anything at all, honestly, unless you want to open your mouth to support the victims. That's great, and that's something that you should do and say. But if you're not going to do that, I don't really see why you need to speak on this at all. This is the part where, in the comments, if you have a different opinion, let me know. But I'm just going off of, like, my personal opinion. Even if this was a dear, dear friend of mine who had been accused of this, I wouldn't want to potentially block somebody who is a victim of this person from sort of seeing justice. I wouldn't want to make them feel like, oh, well, just because the person who did this is nice to everyone else except for them, nothing's going to happen and there's going to be no, no repercussions. So honestly, I would sincerely hope that nothing had happened and I would sincerely hope that my perception of this person is true but I'm not gonna put myself in front of something that has nothing to do with me. That's how I would handle it. 
you let me know how you would handle it. So Mila Kunis, as I mentioned, also has her own letter. Um, I'm going to read even less of this one because like I say, they are all the same, but there are a few parts I really want to highlight. And it says, I first met Danny during our time working together on that 70s show. And from the very beginning, I could sense his innate goodness and genuine nature. Now, I really want you to keep that part in mind, the innate goodness and the genuine nature of it all, because that's actually going to come back up later. Also, sorry, I just realized I sound really angry and pissed off in this video, which is not usually the tone that I enjoy having online but hey I'm trying something new with this channel I'm trying to be more unfiltered and this pisses me off so sorry <laughs> this is what you get for me today but look in Mila Kunis's letter she also brings up the drugs. One of the most remarkable aspects of Danny's character is his unwavering commitment to discouraging the use of drugs. His influence on me in this regard has been invaluable and it's just like again same criticism I had for Aston Kutcher, same criticism I have for Mila. It's gross that you're harping on this drug issue when you know that drugs are an enormous part of the sentencing in this case. Danny's steadfastness and promoting a drug-free lifestyle has been a guiding light in my journey through the entertainment world. It's just like, I could totally believe, maybe, that Aston Kutcher and Mila Kunis actually do think that, like, Danny is a good person, but... As I said before, it doesn't matter what you think of him when he is on trial for these very serious things. Like, have you not considered that your perception of him could be wrong? That's, I guess that's what I want to know. Because people can fool you. People can fool you. People can seem like they're great. We see this happen over and over again online. Where so we have this perception of somebody, and then it turns out they're doing this really awful thing. Like, why would you think that you are like the main character and there's no way actually that like you have been fooled by this person she brings up once again that he's a husband and a father to his daughter she really just poses him as like this older brother she even says it uh his commitment to being an exceptional older brother figure to me has had a transformative impact on my life and it's like that's all well and good but you are mila kunis you are pretty much one of the most popular uh, successful people to come out of that 70s show along with Ashton Kutcher. So why would you think it's possible that you might be getting preferential treatment from this person? I, I, I don't understand. I do understand. I do understand. It's delusion. Anyway, she wraps it up by once again talking about his dedication to leading a drug-free life and the genuine care he extends to others. And yeah, sincerely, Mila Kunis. And also, to be clear, I just picked these two because these are the ones that most people are talking about. But there's actually like a bunch of these letters from a bunch of people that came in and it's just like I, I, I obviously I can't even go through all of this now part of what makes this so gross is that this is totally contradictory to like the image that Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher put forward for themselves Ashton Kutcher actually has this whole foundation like this tech firm called Thorn and the whole point of this organization is to prevent um material depicting you know uh inappropriate situations involving children from spreading online and stuff like that he has actually raised like a lot of money he's done a lot of work to prevent these sort of things and so it's like where is this cognitive dissonance coming from i kind of feel like people overuse the term cognitive dissonance but i don't really know how else to describe this where you have sort of dedicated a significant portion of your life and your funds and your energy to preventing this but then evil of the very same nature is sort of brought right in front of your eyes and you basically close them mila kunis by the way has actually just very recently starred in this film called luckiest girl alive and in this movie she plays a survivor of assault so it's like once again the cognitive dissonance is back you 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 were in this movie that sort of goes over how harrowing this can be and you're still going to turn around and basically open your mouth against victims who have come forward like it's easy to say oh she didn't really say anything about the victims in this scenario but by painting a picture in which there's no possible way that danny could have done this you are basically calling these women liars so this was sort of all hitting just critical mass, if you will, where people were really, really horrified by the fact that these letters went public. And it also kind of raises the question too, like, did Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis not know that these letters were going to be public? Did they think they were just going to be privately read and they were never, ever going to be publicized and they would just sort of get away with this? Or did they think that Danny Masterson was just 
There's, there's no way they thought he was going to be um, acquitted of anything because, like I said, they already knew that he had been found guilty at this point. So I don't know why I'm trying so hard to put myself in these people's heads. I think part of me just refuses to accept that like anyone would do this, but clearly it's been done. And so they put out an apology video and yes, obviously they made everything a thousand times worse. We are aware of the pain that has been caused by the character letters that we wrote on behalf of Danny Masterson. We support victims. We have done this historically through our work and will continue to do so in the future. They go on and on in this video, but before I even get into it, I do want to point out that they have totally disabled comments. So, you know, Anybody who has an opinion on this, I guess, has to keep it to themselves. Actually, if you have an opinion on this, I guess you can share it here and anywhere else where people are talking about this. A couple months ago, Danny's family reached out to us and they asked us to write character letters to represent the person that we knew for 25 years so that the judge could take that into full consideration relative to the sentencing. The letters were not written to question the legitimacy of the judicial system or the validity of the jury's ruling. I don't really think the letters were questioning the judicial system or anything like that either. And I really don't feel like that's what people were upset about. It's more so the fact that you are questioning the fact that these victims could have been telling the truth by painting this picture of Danny as someone who never even uses drugs and has been nothing but nice. We're intended for the judge to read um, and not to undermine the testimony of the victims or re-traumatize them in any way. We would never want to do that. And we're sorry if that has taken place. Our heart goes out to every single person who's ever been a victim of sexual assault, sexual abuse, or rape. I saw a lot of people saying that Mila Kunis in particular looks like super pissed off throughout this video. But honestly, to me, they both look really annoyed. Both of them. Like... They just look like they're, they, they're so mad that they had to sit down and spend 30 seconds of their day attempting to take accountability for their actions. But yeah, this isn't actually an apology for what they did at all. I don't know if you heard it, but they didn't really say we're sorry for writing these letters. They didn't say, you know, what we said in these letters, we totally understand how that was, you know, going to potentially re-traumatize or question the validity. They were just like, uh, no. Well, we didn't mean to do that, so sorry that it could have. Like, it's not an apology. It's not an apology. This is being referred to as an apology, and it's because they use the word sorry, but they're not apologizing for anything here. Now, one thing I do want to point out is that the environment, the production environment of that 70s show, it just seems like it was really, 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 really weird all the time. And, and not just like trying to bring up random unrelated things just because they're in ho the hot seat now. Like, listen to Mila Kunis in this interview talking about her experiences. I'm the one who's kissed every single guy in the show except for Topher. Except for Topher Grace. And, yeah, and in fact, I've kissed Laura's boyfriend, Chris, who guest starred on our show. So I've kissed the Mastersons. I've kissed everybody. That's so wrong, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. So she is here at age 19, I believe. They said in the beginning of this interview, talking about how she's felt she's had to kiss every male co-star on the show. And that's one thing in and of itself. But then she very explicitly makes it sound like she's sort of being made to do this against her will. Like, just listen. It is. Yeah. It's quite wrong. Yeah. And what do the writers, they just throw it, they don't care. No, they really just, I don't know what they're thinking. I have no choice but you know, to just kiss every man on the show. I, would I mean, come on, y'all. This is not a normal way to talk about your experience filming a TV show. I have no choice but to kiss every man on the show. She even says it's wrong. Like, ugh. Then we have young Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis here talking about, actually, a little uh, anecdote involving Danny Masterson. It's interesting how um, Ashton wanted to talk about, like, the pizza parlor incident or whatever. Sorry, I don't know why I'm so hung up on the pizza parlor. That's just such an unnecessary detail. But anyways, it's interesting how, like, this story came up, but not this one. Well, it's funny is when she was she was 14 when we started the show i was like 19 right right and they're like okay you guys are going to be making out in this scene already what the heck and i'm like thinking like Wait, this is like slightly illegal say, that's right that's probably your first kiss ever right it was my first kiss why someone someone bet you made with danny about our first kiss no it wasn't the first kiss <laughs> no, it was like a ahead. second so this is kind of a long clip but what she goes on to explain is that danny apparently bet Ashton Kutcher a few bucks that like, oh, I bet you won't kiss Mila Kunis. And like, 
This was a child. <laughs> they just said that she he out of his own mouth said that she was 14 and he was an adult at 19 years old. And yeah, it was just this whole thing. Now, thankfully, Mila says that this didn't happen. Like the bet did happen, but she didn't actually wind up kissing him. Or I should say he didn't wind up kissing her. But again, these are not the normal goings on of a show in which, you know, people's wishes are being respected. And this is it's very clear that something was very wrong the entire time. Now, I would be remiss to go this entire video without mentioning the Church of Scientology, which I mean, I feel like we all know what Scientology is, but it's basically this weird cult that a lot of celebrities are in really high profile people like Tom Cruise. And it's weird. They take people's money. They mistreat people. They hide a bunch of things that seem like they're crimes. It's really gross. And if you try to leave, they will t literally terrorize you like there's just too much there for me to get into. But what you do need to know is that Danny Masterson used his position within this Church of Scientology to get away with the things that he was doing. He was completely enabled by his position in this church, right? And so here's the weird thing. One of the people who accused Danny Masterson, one of the victims who came forward, she posts a picture where you can actually see Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis at the Scientology event. So whereas Danny Masterson was just very much a part of the Church of Scientology, I don't really think it's confirmed that either Ashton Kutcher or Mila Kunis were, but it sure does raise questions as to what they're showing up at, not just this event, but multiple events. Look at this. At the Scientology Celebrity Center 10th annual fundraiser. Here they are at an annual Christmas Stories benefit. Like these are from multiple years. Christmas Stories 2005. And it's like, yes, obviously these are fundraiser type things. So I'm not saying it's completely unthinkable that they could have chosen to attend these events despite not having ties to Scientology. But come on, y'all. Also, if they are part of this gross church cult thing, that just makes this extra gross because really it just proves that all these letters and all this nonsense, they're really just trying to do what the Church of Scientology always does, which is protect their own members. Like, the, the, forget the victims. It's like, oh no, a member of our church has been accused of something, got to go on damage control mode. And it's just gross. But again, even if this, they just happen to have gone to multiple Scientology events for fun, that doesn't change the fact that this is all gross regardless. Now, even though I've spent the majority of this video talking about that one incident, because as you could tell, there's a lot going on there. I did say I wanted to talk about a couple. The second one, much shorter, because it really does mirror the story we looked at just now. So as many of you know, rapper Tory Lanez was sentenced uh, to 10 years because he shot Megan Thee Stallion, which is, of course, just very disturbing and disgusting. At least you could say justice was served, but still, like, what in the world is wrong with people? And wouldn't you know it, Iggy Azalea, of all people, um, she decided to write a letter to the judge to, I guess, defend Tory Lanez's honor. And surprise, surprise, it has all the hallmarks I've already gone over. My name is Iggy Azalea, and I've been a successful musician for the last decade. I've sold over, I'm not even going to read it all. She basically says, I've broken records previously held by the Beatles, like, nominated for six Grammys. You really, just the attempt to establish credibility is so annoying. Just, just say what you are. I'm a celebrity. I have a lot of power and influence, and I'm attempting to use this influence to sway your opinion right now. In short, like yourself, I'm great at what I do, and I'm well respected by my peers. So she goes on to say that she is actually a victim of abuse, which is, of course, horrible to hear, and I hate that that's happened. And she says, I must make note of the things I've suffered through so that you understand definitively I would not write to you on behalf of an abuser. She then spends the entire rest of the letter defending abuse her Tory like I can't make this up I can't make this up Daystar Peterson Tory Lanez's real name is not the pest you've heard about he's a gardener he helps others bloom any leniency you may afford him would be something you could be proud of and then again she does the thing where she's like he was so nice to me he helped me and my career and it's like what does that have to do with anything? He shot somebody. She also includes the personal anecdote talking about some guy who worked at Postmates and Daystar or Tory Lanez like gave him a job. And it's like, what does that have to do with his decision 
to shoot somebody. I, I really can't emphasize the shooting part enough. And then she also wraps it up the same way where she tries to paint him as a victim, despite him being the abuser. And she's like, since Daystar remains in jail, many of his employees are left without work. I took it upon myself to hire six of his staff members full time. She also plays the family card, not only for Daystar, but for his family, son, and the countless others who depend on him are committed and are committed to helping him reach his full potential. Like, dude, None of nobody reading this letter, not me, not the world, not the victim of the situation, Megan Thee Stallion. No one did this except Tory Lanez. So again, trying to make it sound like this is someone else's problem and Tory's the victim here is just it's unhinged. But yeah, I guess those are all the tabs I had open. This is probably the worst collection of tabs I've ever had open, actually, because like every single one of these is infuriating. <laughs> So I think this is a great place to wrap things up. Overall, even if you're not a celebrity and like you are going to bat for people who have been accused of these very serious things, I would just say think very carefully about what you're actually accomplishing because you might think you're just helping somebody, but you may actually totally be making life much worse for somebody who has already been through pretty much one of the worst things that can happen to somebody. But yeah, I would definitely like to know what you have to say about it. Do you have opinions on the Scientology thing? Do you think that Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis are Scientologists? Personally, I don't think it matters because as I said, it's gross either way, but it's so weird that they've been to all these events. Have you heard about Iggy Azalea at any time in the last five years? That's something I would like to know. Sorry, that was really mean. And that's a joke that I probably would have edited out of my other channel. But hey, I'm trying to be different here. I'm trying to be more, I guess, open, you know, being level headed is great. And it's got me very far. But some people just suck. OK, that's all I had to say, I guess.